Chapter 11, Operation Rainbow Dash. Uh, speaking of me, Legendbringer, um, and Trixie, what are we going to do when Trixie gets back? You know she can't spend time in Alexandria forever. And Moby is forever. You know this, right? <sighs> yes, I know, Rainbow Dash. But don't worry, I got a backup plan. And a plan within a plan within a plan. I, I, I got this, okay? But I'll pray for you when she finally gets here. I've got this, Dashie. Watch me. Dry wobbled about the concentrated cloud stuff that made Rainbow Dash's porch. Her new cloud walking spell left a lot to be desired. Her foes kept sinking into the floor. As she worried as she stood still too long, she would slip right through. But then again, unicorns weren't supposed to walk on clouds. And she had sort of thrown the spell together in a single evening. I'm probably lucky it's working at all, she thought with a gulp. What's wrong with your old one? Y you had a previous one made! She managed to find her way up to the door, made rather confusingly of wood rather than more clouds. She shook her head. She wasn't here to try to grasp the intricacies of Pegasus magic. She was here to see Rainbow Dash. Sitting in place uneasily, she had brought a hover right on the door. Come on up, Shy! King Rainbow's voice from above. Let's well, start. Twilight looked up. There was no pony there. So he took a few steps back and saw that there was an open window on what must have been the first floor. It, it's not Fluttershy, Twilight called back, and I can't fly. A moment passed before a rainbow maned head poked out through the window. Rainbow Dash raised her eyebrows when she caught excited the unicorn on her perch. Twilight, what are you? How are you up here? She so suddenly reminded that she was slipping again. Twilight quickly hopped to one side. So he's a rainbow of Seepa's grin. Um, magic? Could you come down here for a minute? I want to talk. Rainbow's mouth phone and all, and her brows creased as she watched Twilight stumble about. Uh, are you really there, or am I still asleep? Rainbow! All right, all right. The Pegasus jumped from her window, glided smoothly down to a light beside Twilight, throwing a seriously doubtful look at the unicorn's hose as she did. Why are you dancing? Twilight felt her heat, cheeks heating up. He, he, it's part of the spell, she lied. Well, stop it! It's creeping me out! Said Rainbow, striding forwards. Before Twilight could object, Rainbow unfurled a wing, held it up to her mouth, and bit down on one of her feathers. Twilight yelled and shut up her eyes as Rainbow yanked at the plume. Rainbow, what? She broke off with a start and suddenly pressed against her ear. Cranking open an eye, Twilight saw the sky blue Pegasus stepping back and folding her wing again. There, yeah, said Rainbow simply. Curious as to why she was suddenly not sinking. Twilight lowered her head and brought up a hoof to feel around her ear. There was a perfectly smooth feather tucked behind it. She looked up at Rainbow slowly. Does that work? For a few minutes, said Rainbow awfully. So, what do you want to talk about? Phew! <laughs> I'm sorry, what? We could do that? Uh, excuse me, guys. Um, I need to test this theory out. I'll be right back. I've just been told by Filthy Rich that I'm never to perform any experiments with Diamond Tiara ever again. But it was kind of fun. She did seem to enjoy it for a few minutes until we realized that Pegasus makes magic didn't work that way, and I had to flew down to catch her. Filthy Rich did let me hear it. And I'm kind of banned from bargain bins for about a week. Oh well, I prefer to start at Barnes and Nobel anyway. But Nobel anyway, so... Twilight blinked. You can just pull out one of your feathers and... Rainbow rolled her eyes, but Twilight noticed the twins of red creaming onto her face. Well, you don't do it just for any pony, the Pegasus muttered. Anyway, like I said, it doesn't last long, so... Right, Twilight said, dropping back to reality. Um, I was wondering if we could take a walk. You know, to the schoolhouse, right to me up at the diner and going from there, and... I mean, I know it's a little early and everything, but... She trailed off, so they're feeling very guilty. She just made Rainbow yank out one of her lovely feathers, after all. A walk? Rainbow repeated, more surprised than skeptical. Like, just us two. No Trixie. 
Twilight shook her head. See, so staying in today. I thought you and I could deal with some time alone. Rainbow got a cult, obviously. Y you did? Yeah. I mean, yesterday you flew off so fast we didn't really have a chance to talk, said Twilight. Cock your head to the side. All oh, right. Sorry about that, said Rainbow, glancing away as she did. A moment later, she blinked and turned to smile over at Twilight. But yeah, okay, a walk sounds good. Just uh, give me a second, I'll be right down, okay? Twilight and I returned to smile. Twilight and I returned to smile. As Rainbow took off on an air jack flight path, it zoomed back into her window. Twilight reached out to touch the feather again. She wondered why she'd never heard this kind of gesture before. Sharing Pegasus magic by giving a plume? Maybe no pony knew. Maybe it was a Pegasus secret. Or maybe it was something that this author made up just to do some romantic tension between Twilight and Rainbow Dash. Or maybe only Rainbow Dash could do it. She so had to do some research some other time. In any case, it gave her a warm feeling of reassurance in her chest. Know that Rainbow had trusted her with one of her feathers. She so made sure that it sat comfortably behind her ear before trying towards the edge of the cloud. Here already is, she focused on the grassy hilltop far below and challenged her magic to her horn. No sooner had she closed her eyes to, to blink than she found herself standing atop of said hill. She smiled to herself. Even with official Pegasus cloud walking magic to support her, it felt a whole lot better to be back on solid ground. Rainbow Dash swooped down soon after, announcing she was ready to go. And together, they set off the direction of the trail. Still wondering what was wrong with Twilight's old cloud walking spell. The late morning air was crisp and gentle, almost relaxing, as Twilight and Rainbow made their steady way towards the schoolhouse. But now the two of them were this close, questions weighing on Twilight's mind were starting to make her uncomfortable. Rainbow cleared her throat. So, uh, how's Trixie's leg doing? She asked awkwardly. Seemed a lot better yesterday. It's healing up nicely, Twilight granted with a frown. But, um, can we not talk about Trixie, if that's alright? Rainbow cast her a sidelong look and raised her eyebrows. Oh, uh, sure. She let out a breath, somewhere between a laugh and a sigh before smiling. Well, did you have something else in mind? Twilight called resolutely. I want to talk about you, she so said. Well, that was a start. What about me? said Rainbow, her smile wavering as she looked ahead. She told me about what you said yesterday, Twilight muttered, about leaving. Rainbow gave her a grunt. I bet she did. Twilight quickened her pace to try and get ahead so she could meet her friend's eyes properly. I don't understand, Rainbow. Is it something Trixie said to you? Or, she hesitated, have I done something? Don't be dumb, Twy. You haven't done anything wrong, said Rainbow firmly. Picking up that, Twilight said closer. So it is, Trixie. W what did she say? Thought we weren't talking about her, Rainbow threw back defensively. During the silence that followed, she met Twilight's eyes and saw the frown on the lavender unicorn's face. Rainbow sighed. No, it's not her fault. It's neither of you. I just... There's some stupid thoughts bouncing around in my head, you know? I I need some time away, a week or two, then I'll be back to normal. Somehow that wasn't reassuring. What kind of thoughts? Said Twilight. Rainbow huffed again. It's dumb, I'm not going to explain it. Hey, I don't even know if I could explain it. Try. Rainbow stopped in the middle of the trail. Twilight had to swivel around to keep eye contact. She gave the purple unicorn a searching look, as if she was actually considering it. Come on. Twilight pressed as the idea struck her. You're Rainbow Dash! Since when don't you do something because you're not sure you can do it? Rainbow glanced at the ground, then thought, and then closed her eyes. Fine. You want to hear me? You want to hear it? Twilight corrected her confirmation, which Rainbow seemed none too pleased by it. The strangely acting Pegasus took a breath, a snap of her eyes, and suddenly tried onwards towards the tail. Twilight hurried up alongside her. As he walked alongside a much brisker pace, Twilight waited patiently for Rainbow to continue. Pressing her like that wasn't easy, but Twilight really needed to know. You and Trixie, said Rainbow slowly. See you two together is, I don't know, it's weird. It makes me feel all itchy. Itchy? Twilight repeated. I'm sure the nurse has some cream for that. Still was dumb, Rainbow threw back. That's the only way I could describe it. So are you saying you feel uncomfortable when Trixie and I are hanging out? said Twilight. Like yesterday? Rainbow shook her head. No, that just makes you sound like a jerk. Not asking you to stop seeing her or anything. I just... She trailed off. Twilight racked her brain. She knew she could figure out what the problem was if she had thought hard enough. When all the books she read in psychology, the solution had to be there somewhere. Her Frank lit up. You're jealous! She cried. A lot more cheered than was appropriate. It became doubly obvious when Rainbow opened her mouth to retort. 
Closed it again and turned away, her cheeks reddening. A little quick calls to clear her throat. Twilight subdued her voice at a normal level. Sorry, but that's it, isn't it? You're jealous I'm spending so much time with her. Could you not call it that, please? Rambo muttered. Bob obviously her tone, but I pretty much confirmed it. Twilight's legs had quickly left her. Has he really been spending so much time with Tracy that was neglecting her other friends? Did he have reason to be jealous of Trixie? Did everybody else feel that way, too? Twilight, don't freak out, Rainbow warned. Obviously nosing the panic looked in her eyes. It was too late for that. Twilight stopped in the middle of the trail. A fourth and much more disturbing quest than warming its wet way to the front of her mind. She so turned to Rainbow, and her heart started to beat faster. H am I a bad friend? Twilight! A hoof on her cheek, and a firm voice calling her name stabbed her outfit before she could descend further into her panic. Rainbow leant close to the announce switch, all but touching. Don't freak out! Their eyes remained locked for the longest seconds of Twilight's life. The anxiety slowly started to melt away. Her heart rate gradually slowed back down to normal. Twilight let out a breath. Right. She made a denying to herself. Right, I'm sorry, that was silly. <coughs> Rainbow gave a half amused sore smile. No. That was you being an egghead. Don't sweat it. Twilight so couldn't convince herself to sweat it, though. Not just because Rainbow was so close, it was starting to get uncomfortably warm, pulling back the tiniest amount. Twilight tried to think objectively. Even if you hadn't been a bad friend, I definitely haven't been a good one to you, she began. Rainbow sighed and pulled back her hoof. Don't talk like that, Twy. What can I do? Do you want us to spend more time together? I can find time, I swear. No, said Rainbow, turning and staring down the trail again. I could come and watch you practice more often, Twilight tried, hurrying after her. No need, we're cool. Or I could keep you company when you had to get up early to clear the sky. Seriously, it's fine. Desperate now, Twilight cast the bell for something meaningful. I was thinking, she so glanced on the first thing to spring to mind. I'll call the class now with you. Rainbow stopped dead, as did Twilight. The faces looked over, surprise clear on her face. D Don't be stupid! Twilight started back resolutely. Thinking about it, there was no way she couldn't go to Cloud Steel with Rainbow and be back in time for the display. If only going there for a couple of weeks. It would be a lot of work to come up with an effective cloud walking spell that would work for that amount of time. But it meant saving her friendship. Um. Twy, you have an effective cloud walking spell. You used it! I'll find a way, said Twilight firmly. Rainbow blink. Silence fell between them as Twilight eagerly awaited her friend's response for what felt like forever. You really would, wouldn't you? muttered Rainbow. Twilight could only nod. For her part, Rainbow's lips curled up to a smile and took a step closer. That means a lot, Twy. Seriously does. But listen to me. You don't need to make anything up to me. This is my problem. You haven't done anything wrong, I promise. Twilight's heart sank, even though she knew that Rainbow's smile and her words should have brought her leaves. I just don't want you to go. I don't understand, she said hopelessly. Rainbow closed her eyes for a moment. All right, answer me this, Twy. You've got feelings for Trixie, right? Twy bit her lip uncertainly. Feelings? You like her, Rainbow deadpan. Well, yes, I do, but... Rainbow opened her eyes as more than a friend. It took a few, a few moments the words sink in, and even then Twy didn't fully grasp her meaning. Somehow, she was fairly sure that Rainbow wasn't talking about the two of them becoming partners in the display. I, I, would see! Twilight continued to stammer. She watched Rainbow chuckle, silent and mirthless. The words wouldn't come, but that was no surprise. She wasn't sure what to say in the first place. Yeah, that's what I thought, said Rainbow, still smiling as honestly as before. I get it. Don't worry. I'm not gonna tell any pony. Tell any pony what? Twilight wondered, starting to feel exasperated. Well, that's why I've got to go. Rainbow continued. If I stay here, I'm just going to get jealouser and jealouser until Sally do something stupid and uncool. But, two weeks, Twy, said Rainbow. Probably less. Then I'll be back, we can hang out again, and you two will be... She hesitated and looked away. You'll be whatever. So don't worry, okay? How can I not worry? Rainbow, Twilight threw back. Rainbow nodded towards Twilight's ear. You got that? What? My feather. Rainbow waved a hoof and smiled. It's a Kabuki and Pegasus thing. It'll take forever to explain. Basically, giving one of your, some point one of your feathers is a promise. Sir so Crowley lived on and thought. It means I've got your back. Yeah, something like that. So as long as you got that, all you gotta do is call and I'll come running. It's a promise, huh? Huh. Well, I got a few mares I would love to do some promising for. <sighs> Hey, 
hitting on different mares while Tracy's around to stop my perverseness is not the same. Rainbow? Yeah? Punch me, I'm thinking pervy again. Okay! Oh! This is why I prefer Trixie. She only uses the taser. Ow! Do I blink the out surprise breath? Really? You just gave this to me. Just like that? Why not? Said Rainbow coolly. We're friends, aren't we? Oh, and Flare State's got one too, so don't feel too special. So he's smart, but wavered a moment later. But, uh, feel kind of special. Okay? Twy opened her mouth and closed it again. The crutches, he reached out to make sure the feather was still there. I, I do. Thank you. She muttered. Giving Rainbow the first honest smile she managed that morning. A promise like that was more than Twilight could have dared to hope for. If Rainbow could trust her with something so powerful, then she deserved Twilight's trust in return. Hey, Rainbow said, laying a hoof on Twilight's fetlock. The laboratory unicorn looked up to meet her smiling eyes. We're going to be late if we don't get going. Twilight stared at her for a short of moments before offering a smile and nod. Right, let's go. Two hours later. Twilight laid in her bed, staring up at her ceiling and lost completely in her thoughts. If she still had any doubts as to whether Rainbow was really going to be alright, it evaporated by the end of their school visit. The way she laughed, played, and told her usual, madly embellished tales of past adventures, with a true smile on her face, was a refreshing sight. When they parted outside the schoolhouse, Rainbow had left Twilight with one last, reassuring pat on the shoulder and a promise of, See you soon! Yeah, she was going to be alright. But almost as they parted, Twilight's mind had preferably made its way back to other matters. To the unanswered question, what's their talk had left her? Is Trixie more than a friend to me? The question really didn't make a lot of sense. What was more than a friend? Friendship was friendship, wasn't it? The dictionary that adorned the floor beside her hadn't held any answers, nor had the thesaurus she had just tossed to a general's race over her bedside table. She really skimmed through them, and for once, the prospect of rereading them more thoroughly was an ultimate appealing. She was just too exhausted. So I grabbed a pillow. Hugged it to her chest and sighed. There's one thing she knew, was that laying here and trying to think would get her nowhere. Despite the fact that Nagy could constantly at the back of her mind, she couldn't have convinced herself to get up. Someone knocked at the door. Twy didn't budge. She really wasn't in the mood for entertaining visitors right now. The door was unlocked anyway, so whoever it was could come in if they really need to. Twilight? King Trixie's voice. Are you still in there? Twy so in her warmest voice. What's up, Trixie? I'm bored. Came to rough reply. What are you doing? Twy gave us a little chuckle sigh. Nothing. Just having to lie down. I'm kind of exhausted. There was a pause before Trixie spoke again. I take it you don't want to go out and practice then. A frown danced across Twy's face. She just wasn't feeling up to it. Maybe later? She said hopefully. All right, said Trixie. For a fleeting moment, Twy thought that was the end of it. But then Trixie's voice came again. Can we at least go out for lunch? I'm sorry. Twilight shook her head. I'm actually not feeling too well. Sorry. But Spike will make something of you if you act nicely. Trixie fell silent. Twilight waited a long while for a response, but none came. She imagined Trixie huffing and walking away down the staircase. Her kind attempts to get Twilight out of bed thoroughly foiled. The door clicked open. Or maybe not. I'm coming in. Said Trixie, it wasn't a question. Twy didn't object. She didn't bother getting up. This new sloth of laziness, especially so early in the afternoon, was uncomfortable to say the least. Maybe she was coming down with something. She heard Trixie's hoofsteps coming up the smaller staircase within the room. They stopped for a moment as they reached the top, then started again, before finally coming to a complete stop at Twilight's bedside. Not wanting to be rude, Twy tilted her head a little so she could meet Trixie's eyes. The yeah, Asher Unicorn was looking Twilight up and down, while questioning look on her face. You look ill, she observed randomly. Twilight, Twilight tried to conjure up her longest smile, which turned out to be a little more than a lip twits. I'll be okay, she said. It's just, like I said, I'm exhausted. I just need some sleep. Tracy nodded slowly, but didn't move. She was about to make a subtle hint for her to leave, but abruptly stopped herself. She still had a question that needed answering. And the subject was right there in front of her. There's no harm in asking, was there? Curling a lip, Twilight tried to think of the right way to word her thoughts. When she was finally satisfied, she rolled over to her side so she was facing Trixie properly. Trixie, 
What are we? She asked frankly. The showmare blinked. What? What are we? Twilight repeated, subtly doubting that she chosen the wrong best wording. Twisty raised an eyebrow and cut her head to a side a little. Um, unicorns. So I couldn't help but smile at that. Well, yes, she chuckled. But me, what are we as in a relationship? Oh, Tracy grunted. Twilight bit her lip. Do you think of me as a friend? Tracy drew back all of a sudden with a half hurt, half angry expression on her face. Why would you ask that? Are you saying you don't think of me as a friend? No, of course I do, Twilight said hurriedly. Rising to a sitting position and fixing Trixie with an honest stare. That's not what I meant. Trixie squared softened a little, but it doesn't disappear. Then, what do you mean? The conversation was quickly moving into dangerous territory. Twilight wondered where she should just start from the beginning. That way, the question wouldn't be taken out of context. She gulped, denied to herself. Well, it's something Rainbow Dash said. Something about how I might possibly think of you as more than a friend. She tried to throw a light hearted chuckle into the end, came out more as a scoff and half smile. More than a friend, Tracy said, repeated sarcastically. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know, Twice said immediately. Maybe she was just being about us being partners. Twilight was, wasn't sure anymore. There wasn't anything else he could have meant, was there? Other than the one totally ridiculous theory that Twilight quickly looked away in the back of her mind, of course. Does it matter? said Trixie. Twilight stepped out of her reverie and looked up at the showmare again. Pardon? Trixie flicked her mane and turned her nose up. Who cares what we are? Friends, partners, whatever. All I know is that you're a strange, thoughtful, pretty mare I like spending time with. Twilight felt a rustle here in her chest as Trixie threw a self assured smirk. Call that whatever you want. Heat rose from Twilight's cheeks and brought a sort of an unstoppable smile. There was the answer to her question. Trixie had just described word for word how Twilight felt about her. And to know those feelings were reciprocated was something. She likes spending time with me. She thinks I'm thoughtful. She thinks I'm pretty. The last thought in particular made Twilight bite her lip as she stared down at Tracy's hooves. Um, Twilight? Seeing herself, Twilight looked up to see the quizzical look on Trixie's face. Goodbye, Sarah and Eretz. Twilight bounced up from the edge of the bed, crossed the next with the azure unicorn, and put a fetlock around her back. The warm, sweet scented Trixie gave a little yelp of surprise as she was pulled into a hug. Twilight hurriedly closed her eyes and touched her nose to her partner's mane, eager to enjoy the fruits of her surprise attack for as long as possible before Trixie pushed her away. But a long moment passed in silence. Trixie made no attempt to move. Then Twilight fell a whole fire back as Trixie returned to hug. She let a relaxing breath. As Trixie had said, it didn't matter what they were, but even so, Twilight felt her smile growing wider as he reveled in a hug and thought they were decidedly more than friends. Oh man, I can't believe it. How much longer are we going to get to the I'm home? Shit!